The fear is probably what draws me to the sport. I've come close to, to death, really close. Girl, girls shouldn't be doing this. Girls don't belong here. Kirsten will turn around and say, well, actually, no, I, I do belong here. If you don't believe it, I'll show you. Riding bikes is mere living. Your adrenaline's pumping because you made it through, so it's an adrenaline junkie sport. The fact that she has this hunger in her to defy the odds is what makes her different. The freedom, the freedom that I feel out on my motorbike, it's just all of that, it's just flipping cool. We're shooting at, at, at the Shangweni Dam and the bike is able to be transported across the dam wall. I think it must be, I don't know, kind of 50 meters, 60 meters if not a little bit more. Which, funny enough, I, th I don't think it's ever been done um, globally, let alone in South Africa. I suppose it's also, you know, the danger factor coming into it as well and the exhilaration and it's just, it's just flipping cool. So we start off day one, just catch a breath, early morning meeting, all the coffee drinkers had their coffee. It's a good starting point for the day. You can bounce ideas. We can chat about the shots that we want to get through. Also, you know then how much you have to get through. So I uh, just to give, uh, Ryan wasn't at our initial meeting, so, but you would have I've read all the millions of emails and paperwork. And it was always important and it was uh, a great uh, ad. You know, you kind of walked away from those meetings knowing exactly what, what is expected of you. Those early morning meetings were, were, were critical. That they do. And um, just to just keep, maybe just go just there. Stick, yeah, with that. stick with that. And then also he's bringing water to fill that little puddle on that one. That's yeah. a whole sequence of events. So maybe yeah, yeah, we yeah. do that one. Next. So what made this shoot unique was the fact that we were shooting at Shangweni Dam where there's this massive dam wall and we've got to involve this in the story. And Kirsten had to get her bike across as part of the story. And rigging it all up was going to be really challenging. And this is where ASP had this idea and a concept where they can show what they do as a company in terms of rigging and rope access and integrate it with Kirsten, who they're sponsoring for the Dakar and could kind of merge the two stories together. Yeah, I'm happy to show you today to start doing this job here for Kirsten. And I can't wait to see the bike moving from this side to the next side. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and I'm ready to do it. Day one started off, we're all pretty pumped. Early morning start. Testing one, two, three. Uh, how are you feeling today? Yeah, looking, feeling confident, thank you. Yeah, it's looking, looking to be a good day. There's a lot to rig and a lot to set up. And I was chatting with Ryan and we're having some little issue with with the sound, I'm not too sure. I think uh, we just had the wrong cable. No, that's not right. There's like some interference or something. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, Ryan had sorted it. It found out it was, I forget what it was, but it was probably one little cable or something. We've got audio. We're good to go. And it looks like Kirsten's arrived. Working with Kirsten was super cool. She was really down to earth and great in front of the camera, totally relaxed. As we got to know her, it was really fun. I wasn't, I'm not a bit of the Yeah, I think I think, I think, I think, I think, because she's also brought in to what we, what it is that we're trying to achieve and what it is that we're trying to um, accomplish. She made things a lot easier just to get things done. So Tim rigged up his FPV drone and we got a couple of drone shots. Have you heard that FPV following you as well? That drone is noisy. It's not like a normal drone. It's got this high-pitched whine. Sounds like a, a ton of bees following you. It would bank through the trees and then chase after Kirsten and she had like a a little bit of a lip where she got a bit of air and uh, yeah, the drone would chase her down and try to get a nice cool like, action shot of that. Oh, that's amazing! 
<laughs> well done, Tim. She just speeds up quite a bit, but it's fine. No, it's cool, because we've got the other ones we can even cut in between. Yeah. The first day we were shooting uh, down near the dam, Chris was doing some cool like wheel spins and we were getting some lacquer slow-mos. And the ASP guys were at the dam wall getting set up and, and getting started. They only started on the day when we started shooting because we didn't want to start rigging over the weekend and leave a whole lot of gear there. So the first thing for them was actually getting set up to the right height and making sure that all their um, cables and everything could get across the dam and were at the right height and the right tension and trajectory so that when they did send the bike across it didn't hit the water. One of the cool features of the dam wall has got this tunnel you can walk all the way through to the other side and we were going to use that uh, as an option for Kirsten trying to find a way across. So we did a recce and we were kind of like, yeah, it looks like you can fit a bike through here. It's, it's going to be pretty tight, but it had this little sort of step on the one side of the tunnel. On the day we got there, we were like, hey, it's not going to really fit with a big enduro bike trying to get it through the tunnel, making the turns as tight. And then there's these electrical boxes sticking off the wall. Yeah, we just tasked the ASP guys. We were like, hey, we need to remove these electrical boxes. And when we're done with the shoot, you're going to have to put them back up. So the last shot of day one was getting down to a little small stream, which is also en route to the dam wall. You got rocks up there on your left thing. Yeah. It wasn't so simple getting down there. Um, we got the vehicle as close as we could with all the stuff, but you still got to walk a bit of the way. It's not a, it wasn't really a road. And so we, you know, we had to, you know, leave our cars parked um, and trek a little bit in the bush um, just to get some nice river shots and some nice cool splashes and some nice spins. Yeah, we had, uh, we had bad signal up there inside the um, brush there. We were shooting some uh, FPV, chasing um, Kirsten along this bush. And every time you come around a corner, you'd lose signal with the uh, goggles. So I was flying blind most of the time. And then what happened was the drone obviously crashes when you do lose signal because you can't control it. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, our, our drone pilot here, he's laying us down. He says, he says these bushes are too yeah. narrow. I don't believe him. I think he's just scared of crashing his drone. Look, pause, look around, Exactly as you did it. And then stop here, we'll come back up here. And um, come back up here because we might need to do another check. Uh, yeah, it's been really cool. Um, I haven't been on the, the rally bike since Dakar, so it's really nice to have it back and to be flipping spinny some time on it. and. We're in beautiful Shungwini here, so it's cool so far and yeah, awesome. So yeah, one of the shots down there was to get this cool turn and this last moment where like the back wheel could kick up some dirt and she could actually turn it quite quick to get out of this. As she did that, she dropped the bike once or twice, just trying to figure out because it's quite a tight space. It's quite tricky to do a turn like that on a big bike. You gotta get one foot off, and you gotta really like send it and get it going around. And then once you had the feel for the space, hey, she nailed it. The last shot of the day was uh, the, the, the scene at the river. It was also quite fun, you know, a multi-cam setup, GoPros, FPV, slow-mos, and um, you only have a couple of takes. Oh, so you're doing it on the bike? You're just doing your one on there and one? then you'll do about two for the river. Two in the water, perfect, okay.
When you and Tommy were actually really relaxed, uh, they're so comfortable doing their job up there, rigging everything. They know exactly what's going on and they just got down to business, got the shots we needed. I mean, they're hardcore. Breaking new ground, stepping into a male-dominated space. So they were, yeah, consummate professionals. Yeah, it's going, going well so far. So the challenge now is to get Kirsten up these stairs, and, uh, but she's up for the task, so it's going to be an exciting shot. Going to get some nice close-up stuff on her, on, her, on her wheels, and uh, her going up those stairs into the tunnel. So it's, yeah, it's kind of one of these shots. Uh, the challenges have actually been like to do with the sound of the dam, because uh, it's actually quite dense down there, so it cuts through a lot. And obviously the motorbike just covers everything. So it depends what I'm aiming for. So far, so good. Tunnel tomorrow will be interesting to see how actually loud that is in there. So stay tuned. What an epic shoot this is. I mean, there's just like everything going right. We've got an amazing setting. That's playing one of the great characters. We've got awesome bike rider in Kirsten. It's just such a dream to work with. And of course, we've got the dream team. Our crew has just been amazing. So yeah, it's a really epic shoot and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, so Shirley loves drone shots. So we're getting some Shirley shots. We're changing its name to Shirley shots <laughs> um, of the actual entrance for Kirsten Lundman. It's gonna come in. Right here, we're getting a nice wide of the whole dam. But the toilets are potentially a problem. We're gonna do a lack of drone shot, but we have these brilliant toilets and you can't put uh, a toilet and a nice drone shot and you can't fix it in post to remove it. So we're just a bit of manual labor, get them out the way, we're we ready to go. Experience. <laughs> what happened there? They don't pay us enough. <laughs> the girls are up in the air there, busy rigging up, um, getting stuff ready, and uh, they're about to ship the, their hardcore rock blonde um, whisker across the bridge there, so that's going to be exciting. But yeah, no, I've never seen something so hardcore in my life. And uh, vroom, vroom, vroom. The scene is that she's going to come in, she's going to park her bike kind of almost where it is now and she's going to look up and see the girls, but they won't notice her at this stage. She'll then go up the steps and into the tunnel. Yeah, we're just getting ready for the, we quickly just ran the pre-run of going up the stairs um, just to check and see if the bike's going to fit and everything was cool. Um, worked quite easy, stairs over there. Um, quite excited about the sound because the, the, the exhaust sound running through that tunnel is going to be sick. After the mission of getting everything set up, the, the true test is testing your own work. And it was cool to see that uh, the girls weren't afraid to go ahead themselves and, and double check and make sure that it was proofed and that it was ready for when Chris comes across. And I think that says a lot about them and it says a lot about their work as well. Yeah, it was an easy job, but we managed. People who need to prepare to make sure it's safe for sending person here. So it's risky, but as long as you are safe. And when you when you're sending the kakabu, we have to check, keep checking if it's not sagging, if it's not drowning. Yeah, check everything. Yeah, it was quite like a, it was so nice to just to go across uh, the dam. Yeah, it's not scared. Nah, I'm not scared. It's secure. Yeah. So okay, I'm used to heights, so I was not scared. Shot? Yes! And wave? 
so that structure is typically one of the more advanced access systems that we would uh, use on a worksite. We've used a similar structure before on refineries. So with that, everything starts off with what's safe for the individual because we, we're going to have people on, on those loads. All of our calculations are spreadsheets, locked spreadsheets designed by a structural engineer so that we can fill in the parameters that we have control over and see if we fall within the, the safety parameters. And the bike will be on two pulleys, one rope, and then a second rope is a backup. Okay. The the ship. Should be yeah, but <laughs> the only reason we've got two ropes is if you're putting you on. Okay. So you're on no. We'll find out. No, Tell we'll you find afterwards. Out. Right, so we're second day into the production. The guys have been rigging this uh, pretty awesome cable way across the dam wall here, as you can see. And what they're going to do, the aim is we're going to get Kirsten's bike across there. So that's going to be kind of the, the hero shot at the moment. Wendy and Tombi are going to meet up with Kirsten, they've waved her up now. She's going to ride up here and this is going to be her way across the damn wall. So there's a lot of technical stuff that's gone into it. Everything's pretty much ready to go. We've just got to get the right sling so it looks good on video and that everything, it, it just locks into place first time. The guys aren't fiddling around. Kirsten can ride up, we can strap the bike and send the bike across and then send her across. So that's the aim. And when we actually do the shot, let's see if the bike lands in the water or not. So the Shongorini Dam is a really special place. It's a nature reserve and it's run by the community at the moment. It's a source of water for KZN and to have that dam feature in the video, it creates this big expanse that Kirsten has to get across and it's always there. No matter where she went, there was always a dam on one side, so it features everywhere in that valley. Now today we've got our biggest challenge, I would say, other than the dam crossing, um, is we filming in a tunnel. So we're going to get Kirsten riding her bike through this tunnel, which is under the dam. And yeah, it's something we've been planning for the whole week. So shooting in the tunnel presented its own challenges. Uh, primarily the fact that it was pitch black in there. Um, I think we had kind of underestimated that. Fortunately, we had some, some lighting in the back and we were able to bring it in and uh, get enough of it in, in space. Um, so we're lighting up the scene for uh, the tunnel. Um, and the idea is to have tube lights, but directed lights. So we're just blocking off, because there's a lot of spillage on these lights. So it, the idea is to have it like directly down. So we're just lighting one section of the tunnel each time. It's like one beam of light she goes through. Then it shines up on her face. Man. Okay, set is cleared. Rolling. Sounds rolling. Rolling. Seven, take one. C seven, take one. Yeah, you know, shots in the tunnel are pretty cool. We we rigged up some GoPros. Uh, we had Nathan jump on the bike. Paul rode his bike through the tunnel and Nathan could do some tracking shots from the bike. So it was pretty cool. It was quite a tight space as well. Drawing through the tunnel was definitely tricky. Uh, hats off to Tim. He, he just committed, gave it a go. And I think there's less room for error. So he flew maybe a little bit more cautiously than he did when he was outside of the tunnel. When you're outside the tunnel, you can really send it. Like flying into the tunnel, you, he still sent it a bit, but he kind of held back and, and made sure he's getting a good shot and yes, it looks super cool. Take 10. Ocean Driven Media um, being a part of this project, we're driven to achieve and to work on projects that are exciting and that are riveting for both the viewer and the crew. And so for us, right from the, from the get-go, when ASP approached us, we were like, yes, boys, we are on this. So it was awesome to be a part of, uh, of, a, of a project that's this exciting. Uh, and for someone who also who is this exciting. It was really cool just leveling up the production and getting to that point. Uh, Shirley did a great job of taking on the story and directing and pulling everything together. And uh, it was really great to work with her. And our team came together on the, on the production side and made sure like all the shots were there and 
we got everything that we needed, I think, and it really shows in the footage that we got. I was super stoked the cloud came out. So another day in this uh, exciting video that we're all making. Um, today what we're going to be doing is we're actually finding ourselves in a soundproof studio in the middle of Westville and we're going to be recording some interviews with Kirsten and with her agent Brad and with Paul and obviously with Wendy and Ntombi. And the reason we're going this route is because, you know, when in the making of the film we need a narrative, we need some sort of storyline and we didn't want to be putting pressure on Kirsten to have to ride and act. So we just thought it would be great to have the story driven by some interviews as well as some VO. Yeah, we're going to get some good content and then, um, yeah, we're going to be able to weave it all into the, into the storyline, which is great. Once everything was set up, it was time to get across. And Chris was just ready to go. Get the bike up, get, get her strapped up, and she was ready to go. Not an ounce of fear. She was like pretty stoked, pretty pumped. And um, yeah, so she was, she was really up for it. And uh, I think she really came through hard for it. I think Kirsten was keen. She saw that the guys had put up, put up these cables and everything, they've done their mass. They 100% know exactly what's going on. It's not going to fall in the water. There was not even a question of that for these guys. This is the big moment. We're going to send Kirsten across to the back. It's going to be pretty epic. Whole week of uh, leading up to this. Okay. Kirsten went and Ah, I think it was actually probably pretty fun for her. It was, yeah, it was, must have been quite a cool experience being, being there, suspended over the middle of the dam. The dam wall crossing was also, you know, a one take, two take wonder. So we had to make sure that the cameras were positioned so that we could get the best coverage. Same time, eventually we were up on top of the dam wall doing the shots there and it was time to get the bike across. 